Does Monday at the office feel like a storm? Not with Microsoft Copilot. That feeling when Copilot gets everyone up to speed instantly? It's sunny again. When Copilot simplifies complex data so your teams can act, that sun's shining on a beach. And when Copilot uncovers hidden insights, you're on that beach with your people and you find buried treasure. That's Microsoft Copilot. Learn more at Microsoft.com slash AI for all. What does Colgate mean by live life to the brightest? Could it be a rich glass of red sipped inside a Parisian cafe on a snowy night when my gaze is met by a tall, mysterious... <coughs> I mean, brushing is directed with Colgate Optic White Pro Series Toothpaste gives you a visibly whiter smile in just three days, so you can live life to the brightest and finish that glass without worrying about teeth stains. Colgate Optic White. Find it at all major retailers. another episode of the reality is it's me newer as always and i just finished yelling at my brother about his microphone so i'm trying to maintain professionalism but i can't hey by the way yes. over here. hello um multiple people have left reviews saying number one that we have uh, an organically funny uh relationship oh what did that mean it's not know. you know that organically funny relationship is built on trauma on shared trauma, that's what it's built on. <laughs> Correct. And then they were like, I wish I had that kind of relationship with my brother. Oh, that's nice. Wait, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Are we no, weird? Are we a weird sibling uh, relationship? No, I think it's... Not be this, uh... What? Should people not be this jokey with their siblings? No, I... Should it's I a respect compliment. you as What's a wrong with you? No, what is wrong with you? It's a compliment. <laughs> To what? It's a compliment to who? Is it a compliment to me? That's all I care about. Um, I don't care about if it's a compliment to our relationship. That's valueless to me. You know what? Just forget it. Scratch (laughs) it. End of the episode. Scratch it. That's it. We're wrapping it up. Anyway, I wanted to say something nice, but I guess I can't. Anyway. Yeah. uh, We are here to talk about episode five and six of The Crown, because I want to hurry up and get to the episode with the Pakistani man, which is, I believe, the next episode, right? Yep. Uh, So we're going to talk about episode five, The Way Ahead, and episode six, uh, Ipatiev House? Ipatiev House? Uh, I think the the key to saying Russian words is you just kind of mumble it, and you say it (laughs) under your breath, and then you just, you know, pretend like you just, you know, you know how you pronounce it that house oh that was really good yeah exactly <laughs> you just you know what you did you only pronounced the um consonants you did you barely even pronounced this so the... <laughs> <laughs> you get the p the t the v sound in your gut yeah if you can't understand me that's on you <laughs> sorry to do it house. yeah okay so episode five uh the way ahead you had mentioned that as i watch this show that i will be positively charmed by charles yes <laughs> charles w- is charming charles is in charge charles is in charge of my heart yeah. okay yeah. so this episode the way ahead it starts with uh charles and camilla on the phone and it seems like a pretty innocent conversation it turns out somebody catches it in the radio waves or something i don't know what that was about uh it was really cool the way they showed that and uh they the the phone call gets leaked to the press to the daily mirror Mm -hmm. and uh at the same time diana and charles get permission from the queen to separate they the you know the crown releases a an official statement charles is meeting with a lot of people to try to see if they can make the monarchy more progressive like everything that is happening so far in this episode i'm like i don't know guys charles is kind of the best exactly yeah <laughs> like the monarchy must be modernized or whatever i'm like yeah charles you're right yeah, he's like, you know, it doesn't have to be because it's like anointed by God. It could be anybody. It could be Hindus. It could be Muslims. It could be Sikhs. I'm like, yeah. okay. All that. And he looks like Jimmy McNulty. Oh, my you God. <laughs> so handsome. So handsome. Um, and then um, 
The Daily Mirror, after the release, after the, they, we find out, everybody knows that the Charles and Diana are separating, so the Daily Mirror decides to release the intimate conversation between Camilla and Charles, and it is ruthless the way they show this. <laughs> it made me so, it didn't make you uncomfortable to watch it. It did make me, and you know what, I felt, I felt sorry. I mean, I'm sure we're going to go into how we feel about the entire thing. But I, I felt so bad for the guy. I I don't it was like really awkward. It was like the fact that like the way they showed it of the of like the conversation playing in the back end to like a soundtrack of everybody in the family reading the papers and Ooh. reading the transcript of the conversation. And, and that's the thing, right? I mean, like you people have conversations. I'm sure the conversations that you know we have with each other. Uh, in regular, obviously, it's not nothing like that. But um, you know, when you <laughs> Thanks for specifying, when you see it written down, um, you don't get, you know, you can't see uh, the tone, right? Mm-hmm. You just see, and it's just terrible. It's so bad. Let's just talk about the elephant in the room. <laughs> What's the elephant in the room? Charles wishes, yes, that he could be a tampon inside of camilla (laughs) so that part um Uh i was trying to figure out so as a joke right obviously uh, they somebody's he's because it's not hot at all that's like the (laughs) grossest thing i've ever heard no but that's the thing like the actual conversation right like that they seem to be having or at least the way that it's depicted on the show it's it's a joke he's joking right because he's like, yes. oh, yeah. And yeah. then she's like, ha ha. And then you'd get flushed on the toilet. And he's yeah. like, ha I could come back in life as a box of Tampax. Like, <laughs> initially, he's like trying to get, I feel like part of it is like he's trying to get sexy. And then Camilla's like, okay, that's weird. I'm just going to laugh about it. And then they make a joke of it because he's like, oh, I, t- I wish I could be your knickers. Right. Yeah. And then you're like, okay, he's trying to like be hot about it. And then I don't know, she kind of like laughs. And then he's like, yeah, or I could be a tampon. Do you think that's sure just Charles doesn't know how to do sexy talk because how else, you know, how, where would he learn from? Um, I, you know, I, it feels like you're trying to point Charles as the only one who's being weird. In this conversation. No, I think they're both, both are being weird. Yeah. yeah. I think they're both being weird. But I mean, I would say that I I feel like I feel like if people were to hear most normal people's like sexy talk, they would probably be like, you guys are fucking weird. Like, yeah. I don't know. I just I feel like there's obviously not this level of weird, but I think that when you're in a relationship and at this point, Charles and Camilla have been together for like 20 years, right? Like they've been just secretly together for, for decades at this point. Exactly. So it's not really, um, I was trying to think about it. It's not really sexy talk, right? It's just an intimate talk and in an intimate moment with another person, you say all sorts of stuff just to be funny, right? You say stuff that's vile. That's you, you don't say stuff that you would share with, even if there was a third person there. So I felt yeah. really bad for I felt really bad for Charles, uh, like how this entire thing came about. First of all, that guy who intercepts the call, what mm-hmm. a fucking weirdo that guy is! Just sitting <laughs> out there. we're talking about weirdos. Yeah, that guy is just sitting in, like in his van and then just picking up conversations from throughout the city, I guess. Yeah, and then just weird. recording it. Yeah, it's very weird. It's very troubling. It is um, troubling. And then how even how we came out because the uh, they sat on it for two years right that's mm-hmm. the story mm-hmm. um, until it was determined that well now we can uh, invade their privacy but that doesn't make any sense to me I mean it doesn't change who he is as a person um, it doesn't change either of their statuses just because he's not with Diana anymore doesn't give them the right to you know publish it that's fucked up. Yeah, I mean, people are looking to make a buck. And I feel like that's another part of like, the way that the monarchy is covered 
especially by the media, right? Yeah. It's like it is sort of their way of taking back control of the fact that like the royal family has been able to profit off of uh people for so long that the that the media gets to profit off of them. I mean, you think about the fact that like Netflix just released the uh Harry and Meghan documentary or whatever, which by the way, everybody is loving it. It's very good. I'm probably going to watch it. But I don't know it. if I'm going to watch it. I've seen a lot of news stories about it. I'll probably get around to it at some point. But yeah, I might force you to watch an episode or two, a couple of clips. But um, so, it looks so it, it looks good. Like it looks it looks uh it looks very interesting. I do think that there is this thing right of like of I I'm thinking about what I'm, I'm I was watching this episode. And I'm thinking about the fact that Harry and Meghan have this documentary out, and the reason why Harry and Meghan are doing this reality show is because they want to take control of the narrative, of the fact that so much of existing in the royal family has been like, and even when you go into like the next episode, right, or even this episode, the Queen says later on, you know, the crown is consistent; it's an atom, in, in, inanimate, and Charles is an animated person. And that's sort of Charles's fight in this entire episode is to say that, like, even when he goes on after this to go and do that interview, after he's, like, fully humiliated, he goes on and does an interview and he talks about, you know, what he imagines uh, the monarchy could evolve to and all that stuff. He has all these progressive ideas. He talks about his relationship with Camilla. He says, you know, we have this longstanding friendship. And he admits to everything. He admits to all of it, right? Yeah. Um. I think that those are all fairly new concepts for the crown because the crown never did that. Nobody in the monarchy ever did that. Nobody in the monarchy ever told their truth. They never spoke openly about anything. So to some degree, like these are just different versions of people being able to take control of their own story. Because if you don't take control of your story, somebody else is going to write it for you, especially when you are in the public eye like this. So, yeah. So I, I think the... Um... The, the the thing that I thought about in like 2022 terms, right, mm -hmm. is that, okay, when you are a public person, um, it's like, it's a question of fairness, right? It's like how much of your life um, is actually for you to keep private versus how much of it do you owe the public, right? So it, to me, sure, he is, you know, he's the prince, he's the future king of England, um, his entire existence is based off of other people's work, essentially, because mm -hmm. everything that the monarchy is paid for or everything in the monarchy is uh, paid for by the people. So yeah. you can make an argument, well, you actually work for us. We are the ones that are paying for this lifestyle. Nothing that you say in private really belongs to you, but that's bullshit, right? I mean, it, it, he does have a right to privacy and it was violated there. Um, and then, you know, we see that now with like celebrities and stuff like that. Right. So, you know, when celebrities, private conversations become public, whether, you know, if it's a leak, obviously that's just, that's a crime. Yeah. Right. But it's not always treated as a crime. Right. It is treated as gossip. Yeah. Right. So like, and, and the question is, I think, I think we're all kind of, we all understand that it's wrong. But we also kind of don't care. I think in general, people don't care about the crime that was committed because to us, we're like, well, the piles and piles of money that you make out of being a public person, out of being a celebrity, you know, really, that's is that really fair? Like the amount of money that you make out of being an actor, if you're just looking at how much work you're doing, is that actually like is that actually like a fair uh, write-offs like so like if an actor makes 20 million dollars for a movie um they have you know they have earned that money right because mm -hmm. the movie is going to make whatever and that is a fair market value but in terms of how much hard work they're doing on that movie it's not as much hard work as like a bricklayer right a yeah, bricklayer has a harder job right i think we would respect a bricklayer's privacy way more than we would a celebrity because i think in our minds um, something about the fact that they make as much money as they do kind of makes it fair game, even though yeah, it's not. It's not. I think that there is this like we feel this like hateration entitlement. It's like I'm entitled yes. as a hater to mm -hmm. your misery, which is mm -hmm. not fair. 
It's not nice. I think the other thing is that a lot of times the celebrities or people in the public, I, you know, initially when they want to become a famous person or they are a person who is in the public, whatever, they work a lot on their image. They're how they're like, how much they're liked, how well they're liked. So they make an effort to like be well liked and be relatable and all these things because they want to be like one of the mm -hmm. people. And then what ends up happening is that if, if information like comes out about a, a person, especially when it's something um, bad, like problematic, I think that there's – it always just is like, oh, I'm shocked that this person did it because I just didn't imagine they were somebody like that. But the truth yeah. is that we, we they don't own – Isley, we were talking um, on our episode earlier this week about Will Smith, right? Like he, we don't, he doesn't owe anything to anybody to prove that he is some type of person. There's a lot of like a lot of that reaction that we have to gossip about people's personal lives is always like, oh, well, that's not the way they portrayed themselves to be. But like if you think about all of us at like our daily jobs, like at work, like at my my place of business working for Big Pharma, nobody knows what a piece of shit I am. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like people at work, you're polite. You put on your best face. And if you think about like the part of being a, a celebrity, whether you're an actor or a singer or whatever, a lot of being in the public, that's part of your job. It's part of your profession to be likable. So you're always going to put out your best image forward. I get so that. I th th so this thing that this feeling that we get of like, oh, how could so and so do something? That's not who they were. That's not how they acted. It's crazy because every human being is flawed. We're all flawed people. I always say this. Good people do bad things sometimes and bad people do good things sometimes. Like, yes, Charles, this episode is doing wonderful things. He was still a piece of shit husband to his wife, right? Like, no. right. So like, I think that there is this thing of like, do I, you, multiple things can be true at the same time. Charles and Camilla had their privacy encroached upon. They were, it's a, viol it's a violation of their privacy. It's absolutely fucked up. Um, there's that guy who did that is a creep. The fact that it's like in the news is terrible. Yeah. All that stuff is terrible. All those things are true. Um, am I enjoying reading gossip about famous people? Yeah. Also true. <laughs> yeah. I think, you know, uh, you mentioned Will Smith and I don't want to get into Will Smith again. Please don't. <laughs> But I would say I, I don't think that that example applies as much as the first thing that we spoke about earlier this week, which is the affair, the mm -hmm. Good Morning America affair, right? Mm -hmm. People are having an affair. People have affairs all the time, right? The fact that I understand why it's news, but that to me is uh, a bigger violation than however you feel about Will Smith. I, I will yeah, say sure. the, mm -hmm. the, the difference about Will Smith is, is that I think... Um, if if I had heard that Will Smith slapped Chris Rock across the face, I would have felt way different about it than actually seeing, seeing it. it. That's the big difference. Because, also, he did, it, yeah, he did it at work. He did it at the Oscars. He did it on the <laughs> biggest possible stage you could do it at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so. Anyway, um, so <laughs> I would love to talk about anything else. Um, so then, uh, Diana is a very few, little bit of Diana in this episode, but we did see her go out in her revenge dress. Yeah, she looked great. So hot. I'm a simp. I'm a simp for Elizabeth Debicki. Do you think that if Diana was alive today, you'd be a simp for her too? I don't know. If you were, if you were in your advanced age mm -hmm. at the time that Diana was alive. Oh my gosh, she's two years younger than me when she died. <laughs> she was released. <laughs> Would you be um, in love with her? I don't know if I'd be in love with her. Can I, like, I say don't... something? Yeah. I'm just, it just occurred to me right now. I feel. Uh -oh. <laughs> because I know like that she was in love with this doctor man from Pakistan. Yeah. I feel like if you were at your age right now when Diana was alive and she yeah. ran into you and you struck up a conversation with her. Oh my God. She wouldn't be in love with you. I think was, she would be a simp for you. I think so. I think in general, um, she had a lot to get off of her chest, right? She was looking yes. to talk to people. Yes. And you know, you know, I love me a nonsense conversation. Um, <laughs> so I think that would have worked in my favor. Um, and then we'll get into the Pakistani doctor 
and his appearance and how he presents himself to the world. Um, and everything that I thought about that uh, when we watch the episode next week, because that oh, is interesting. Yeah. Mm. Um, question to you. Yeah. So you take Diana mm. out of the equation. Okay. Right. Or maybe you take out Diana's like, whatever her public profile, the fact that she was the queen, the fact that Charles was dating. Mm-hmm. Is it the Charles and Camilla love story? One of the great love stories of our time. Unfortunately, I have to agree. Yes. <laughs> It's like it it like really chaps my whole ass that I have to admit that it <laughs> grinds every single gear that I have in my body. Yeah. But I do think that Charles and Camilla are fucking soulmates. Those they really two. are. They, they really, really are. And, They've been through I, it all. And I wonder if we would have. I, this is mean and cruel, but it's also a reality of life. Um <laughs> If Camilla looked like Diana, I think she would have been way better received by everybody. Because we are kinder <laughs> to pretty yes. people. Yes. There's that TikTok I sent you of that girl who's talking about <laughs> being cast as Camilla. <laughs> For the reaction being like, what am I going to do? Drive to my nearest bridge? Because, <laughs> yeah, I think it's fucked up. But I think a lot of it is that comparison, right? And like Camilla and Charles are the same age. Like they're they're yeah. actually. Oh, there you here. go. That, that's the biggest check mark for you. That's Apparently, the biggest check mark for me. Same yes, age. Same You're age. All, all of your, um, your genitals are the same age. Apparently that's the biggest <laughs> thing. It's not just your genitals, you fucking weirdo. Uh, that's uh, that's what you keep harping on. <laughs> no, I, have, but for the record, I have very young genitals. Oh, I no, have genitals. No, that no, are I don't want to way... talk about your genitals. <laughs> Somebody's gonna leave a review being like, "Last time, well, after a review, I really enjoyed their brother sister relationship, but today it got weird." <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, like they're Camilla and Charles are best buds. They really They're are. Besties. It's, They're it's so in very, love with each other. It's a very and they had to overcome the Queen of England to stay together. Like that is a lot of pressure. That is a lot. Yeah. And that bitch is now Queen Consort. Yeah. We we still don't know what that means, right? Honestly, it's like a, a couple of letters away from concubine for me every time. <laughs> and that's all and that's what and the reason why you say that is because of the way Camilla looks. And frankly, I find that disgusting and you should be ashamed of it. No, yourself. the word consort just sounds like concubine to me. What is your it problem? Sounds it's like a mixture. Nothing- it sounds, it sounds like nothing. a mixture between escort and concubine. It <laughs> consort. sounds more like, it sounds more like carburetor than it does concubine. <laughs> 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 The queen's con- <laughs> the queen's car- uh, carburetor. Con- con- <laughs> uh, uh, okay, listen. Apparently, Tampax. So when we recorded the episode with Sonia, the Moo Moo episode, you guys mentioned to me that there, this thing was coming up, and then there was a Tampax tweet this that week, that same week that came out, that was very problematic, and then they had to delete it, and then they needed yeah. <laughs> released a um an apology tweet but apparently it said something like you're in th- <laughs> you're in their dms we're in them we are not the same <laughs> <laughs> and people were horrified but i was like honestly it's kind of funny it is very funny um i don't mind it as a as a as as a tampax customer i'm not mad at that but people were mad um okay so the queen is, uh, you know, she's like, Charles. And the, the person who's the most mad is Philip. Philip is like, how dare you? It's a, okay. Kind of reminds me like, because I, you know, I, I've tweeted about this. And now you and I were like, I've been telling you, I've been watching the Sopranos season one. And I just yeah, got buddy. to the episode. Spoiler alert. I just got to the episode where uh, Uncle Junior loves to go down on his lady. But yes. it's, <laughs> he says you have to keep it a secret because uh, if you, if you know, if you if you go down on a woman, you'll go down on anyone. Um, and I feel like Philip is having like a very similar reaction to Charles. I mean, <laughs> granted, Charles's thing is a little bit different, yeah. but he's really, really mad. Uh, as Charles calls him, Papa, because Anne is like his Anne is Charles's like biggest advocate, which I feel like is so nice of Anne. 
It is. It's very nice of Anne. Um, I like that moment for them. Of course, that fucking piece of shit, Andrew, nowhere to be seen. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but I think um, Papa, he's grossed out because he still lives in, uh, you know, his mindset is still very old school. Like a woman is just there for reproducing, essentially. I mean, uh, it, it, maybe that's not fair because he does have a nice relationship with uh, Elizabeth. But I think, you know, I think we talked about before, they're okay with them banging whoever the hell they want to because they're they're just like, oh, just get your rocks off. Um, yeah. But they don't like that he is, I guess, as open and free with this woman. Like, I think they'd be okay if he if it was just like straight up sexy talk. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's the fact that also he's like so goofy with this woman, I think, is also something they don't like. Like they want yeah. – it's like one thing for the Prince of Wales to be like having an affair. But then it's another thing for the Prince of Wales to be like, you know, giving this woman um, the most like corny, goofy parts of himself. It's like yeah. you can dick her down, but like don't let her get so emotionally close to you. <laughs> Dick her down. Dick her down. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, because they they don't mention the unfairness or, you know, like, of the fact that this private conversation was recorded. Like, mm-hmm. that doesn't seem to come up for the the way, what, what's the name of that committee? The Look Ahead Committee or whatever the, the hell it's called? The Way Ahead Committee. The Way Ahead Committee. They don't care about that. All they care about is what he said in this intimate moment with this woman. It's fucked yeah. up. Yeah. But the prince, you know, Prince Charles, he keeps carrying on. He does the prince's trust. He's breakdancing at the end. We find out that he's been doing amazing things with the prince's trust. Yeah, with the kids and stuff. I had no idea. <gasps> I have no idea if that's accurate. Oh, that's true, too. We should probably should have Googled. I mean, the crown usually isn't uh, lying about those things. But, you know, mm-hmm. they've, like, worked with uh, underprivileged children, all this stuff. I mean, stuff that, like, the crown never really did. Like, they just attended galas and, like, you know, supported the arts a little bit. But, like, they weren't really doing anything with the people. And honestly, that sausage-fingered fuck might be <laughs> might be it for... The people. And, uh, and, and, and I honestly, now watching this, I really wouldn't be surprised if, like, there is... N- like, I wouldn't be shocked if, like, William never becomes king because Charles, like, you know, towards the end is like, fuck it, we don't need any of this. Let's vote on it. Uh, Riz Ahmed can be the next king of England. <laughs> it's time. Oh, shit. I just oh. dropped water everywhere. Hold on. I got too excited about Riz Ahmed, and now there's water all over. The place. Fantastic. Yeah, I feel like what if he just like gets rid of it? Maybe. He just says no thanks, no more. Is King Charles one of the great leaders of our time? <laughs> <laughs> no, but Dominic West is. Oh yeah. Oh, so hot. Um, okay, let's talk about the next episode. Episode six really fucked me up the beginning of this episode. I'm not gonna lie. Really this sad. one made me oh, very sad. Mm-hmm. I was like watching, you know, episode five, and I was like, hey, maybe the maybe the monarchy isn't so bad. And then you go to episode six and you're like, no, 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 they're they're the bad guys. So this episode opens up basically where English, uh, the English fucked over, uh, the crown fucked over the Russians um, during the 1917 Russian Revolution. The Romanovs had sent a plea to England or to the British to save them. And they just said, uh, nope. And then the Romanovs are murdered in the Ipatiev house. house. Very sad. Very I, sad. It was very sad. It made me very, very sad. And then also, right as soon as I got done uh, watching this episode, I started listening to the Anastasia soundtrack. I'm so glad you said that because I was <laughs> going to talk about that for a second. I was like, can we just spend the first like 15 minutes of talking about this episode discussing how the Anastasia cartoon and the soundtrack associated with it is perhaps some of the best animated movie music of That's all time? So good. Oh, it's so good. What do you think is better, that or the Hercules soundtrack? So I think um, if you are, it, it depends what you're in the mood for. Um, yeah. The Hercules soundtrack, to me, because uh, I've uh, recently been listening to that as well, mm-hmm. I think it has more soul in it, obviously. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anastasia soundtrack is more melancholy. So sad. Um, I'm, because I've been listening to the Hercules soundtrack alongside with uh, 
the Greatest Showman soundtrack, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which both of those I love uh, too much. I think um, <laughs> there's, and I think I've I've overheard them both too much to the point where now I'm like reevaluating if there's like some cultural appropriation going on yeah. in both of them. Oh, because because there is you know there's a lot like especially the Greatest Showman soundtrack. There's mm-hmm. a lot of historically black music. Oh, like um, taking it to church. Yeah, taking it to church. Also, like the drum line in one of the mm-hmm. songs. Mm-hmm. It sounds like a SWAC drum line. SWAC is like the HBCU athletic mm-hmm. conference. Mm-hmm. Um, it sounds like one of those drum lines. Because I'm like, I get like, there's this one song called, uh, I forget what it's called. It's when he's like, in the end, he's like singing about his family or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then there's a part in the middle where it's just like drums. And I get so hyped listening to that. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't care about this white millionaire losing his family. This is too much. Like, this music is too real. So now I'm reevaluating that. Well, look at you. I'm very proud of you for this being so progressive in thought. I I've like how you... Part. I like how you think that you that you're the reason why I'm progressive. You are the reason why I'm going in the other direction. <laughs> no, I'm the reason why because you were like, "What would my sister think of me if yeah, I okay. continued?" <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, basically, what I'm trying to say is, I am glad that I have made you uh, question whether you should be enjoying things that you've always enjoyed. Okay. Yeah. Because there's nothing. Yeah, there's nothing that brings me more joy than knowing that I've ruined a thing for you. I know. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Um, also, uh, John Cusack as that guy, Dimitri. Yeah. So hot. Hottest cartoon ever. And Meg Ryan was Anastasia, right? Yeah. Weirdly, <laughs> you want to hear something really fucked up? But The animated um, Robin Hood, the fox mm-hmm. from the animated Robin Hood. <laughs> Also very hot. And I don't care to explain it. I don't I don't care to explain it. Okay. He's got a big you grew up in the nineteen eighties, do you understand? Yeah, I I think that movie came out in like the nineteen thirties, by the way. (laughs) Um but yeah, but he's got a big tongue. So, you know. Okay. Anyway. Um we move uh, move over to the 1990s when Boris Yeltsin has become the first democratically elected Russia uh, leader of Russia. It's the fall of the Soviet Union, and the British have begun to form a relationship with Russia again. Um, the PM tells us that Jonathan Major tells us uh, that Boris is an Anglophile. And uh, he just really wants the queen to visit Russia. He's really excited to see the queen. And the queen, like, they have a nice meeting. And the queen's like, yeah, I'm not going to do it until my cousin's bodies are properly buried. And um, because the house, the the Patiev house, was uh, demolished while Boris was, like, working there in the 1970s. Uh, Working there as something, I don't know. I didn't catch all the details. But... He says, all right, fine. I'll fucking do it if it means that I, the Queen of England will come and visit me. Uh, but he also does it while talking a lot of shit about her in Russian. Um, and so there's like all of that. But really the story on this episode, the real story here is uh, not really about Russia building a relationship with England, but more so about Philip and Elizabeth's marriage and Philip's relationship with Penny. Yeah, buddy. Oh, my God. I loved it. I loved watching the parallels. I loved the way that like they're talking, you know, um, the queen is talking about how excited she is about DNA and about like, (laughs) she says it's so funny. Um, You know, just about, she's just excited that Philip is interested in something that she is doing because she feels like that means that she and Philip will get to spend more time together because all Philip really wants to be doing is uh, riding his carriage, doing his carriage rides. And he does that with Penny. Mm-hmm. They have a joint enjoyment of the carriages. Well, is that, I'm sorry, are you going to go through the entire episode or is that where you were putting full stop on that relationship? Because there's a second part of that that I find very interesting. Go ahead. So, you know how Philip says, you know, Philip asks Elizabeth to befriend Penny. Yeah. Um, and he says that, you know, I I get a lot of um, mental stimulation 
out of this relationship, out of this relationship that I have with these carriage people, right? Um, mm-hmm. And most of it is comes from Penny. So she's important to me mm-hmm. <clears throat> as a wife yeah, and a mother. Yeah. Um, how do you feel about that? Is that is that a betrayal in your eyes? Well, so I think you and I and a cousin of ours, we were talking about this recently, right? Of like, is a friendship that like if you are married and you have a close friendship with a person and you want to spend time with that person a lot and you're not going to do anything with that person. But if in an alternate universe, if you were single, if they were single, you would probably pursue that. Is that kind of a friendship inappropriate? I think it kind of like goes to, I mean, I'm pretty sure that Philip was trying to fuck Penny or but. But but that's the thing. I, I have a question. Is your assumption is that uh, misogynistic? That you're just like, oh, you know, that that's all he wants from this woman? Because she could. I mean, obviously, they had similar well, interests. Hold on. Right? You're calling me a misogynist? Because that's right, baby. I think that Phil wants to fuck. <laughs> I have no, lapped no, you. No. I have lapped no, you in, no, the, no, in, no. in the progressiveness no, in this no, family. No, 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 no. That is it. You went all the way around. And now I went all the way around. <laughs> <laughs> Um, first of all, no, that's not how misogyny works. Secondly, um, don't tell me how misogyny works. I know, I think I can tell you. I'm a woman, I believe I can tell you how misogyny works. I have been practicing these dark arts my entire life, I think I know better. (laughs) No, um, do I think that Philip could have very well just like enjoyed Penny's company? Yes, but the, Mm -hmm. the information that we have about in real life about their like about Penny's access to Philip and Penny's involvement in the royal family without her. Like there are other people who have royal blood who are more involved, who are, who are less, who have less access to the royal family than Penny. Right. So I do find that alarming. I find it alarming, but I have, we, we both have friends that we are closer to than we are with family members. That doesn't mean shit. So if I'm going to not be like a cynical bitch, I, I could think to myself that it could be because of Penny's child passing away, right? Of this child, maybe you know, this five-year-old girl dying of cancer. That's extremely sad, right? Or like, I don't, yeah, I think she was five. Um, that is extremely sad. And it could have been that, right? It could have been them being very moved by seeing that front and center and that and then i think he talked about his grief about his sister also right so yes they have that in common and you know that can bring people closer so if i rem- if i remove like that uh, suspicion of them like having that relationship of it being like a sexual nature going back to the real- original question of like if my husband had a friendship with a person yeah Here's the and thing. She, I think that I think the key here is like Philip knows. Philip knows that this is gonna be viewed as inappropriate. Yeah. Right. And the thing with the crown is, if you are the thing with the crown is that it's all about perception. It's all about optics. So if you are doing something that has bad optics to it, at least in the Queen's generation, you mm-hmm. don't do it. Yeah. It's, it's like if you're Elizabeth, you don't do a thing simply because it has bad optics. That is a good enough reason to do it because as like I feel like watching The Crown for this many seasons, I feel like a big thing of Elizabeth is like, I don't want to have to explain this situation. I don't yeah. want to have to put words on this situation. I don't want to have yeah. to provide nuance. It is either mm-hmm. yes or it is no. I, I the That t- seems to be a point, like it's, it's a strain on her to have to do that. So- as far as she's concerned, I would think that she would think, Philip, if this is going to be a bad look, you shouldn't do it. Yeah. That's it. And you should understand. You should understand you should. Yeah. and you should not do it. So for him to say to her then that like, why don't you go and hang out with her so people don't think that about us? Ooh. Yeah. So that is a big ask, right? That's but a big he ask. is, but he is also telling you in that moment that hey, I am as a person, just as a person, as your husband, I'm telling you that this is something that is good in my life. 
that mm-hmm. you, you don't have to worry about the you know any sort of like sexual impropriety here um mm-hmm. you know this is just this is just a friendship and i really value this friendship and this is and i'd like you to make it easier for me is that you think that's him being unfair that like that that's an unfair ask of him yeah so let's say if your husband <clears throat> i'm not the queen of england but okay had a friend mm-hmm Let's say if you guys were friends with another couple, mm-hmm. right? And the girl and the lady um, was also a huge Eagles fan. Okay. And a Batman fan. Okay. And you and your husband, uh, and you, sorry, your husband and her talked about that constantly. Uh-huh. Would you feel threatened by it? Yeah. But <laughs> I'm a deeply insecure person. And my husband is very handsome. Yeah, that's so true. So I feel like, like I would feel, uh, I would feel very protective of my relationship. However, however, I will say this: yeah. I would have a conversation. I would feel like probably sometimes murderous levels of jealousy and <laughs> anger and like territorial feeling, territorial. But if that woman is also close to me, then I would be fine with it. Yeah, well, I think in theory, you're fine with it. In theory, I'm fine with it, but I think like deep down inside, would it still bother me? Yes, but there yeah. are a lot of things in marriages what, where you can go, this bothers me, however, I trust my partner enough for yeah. it, for to get over it, yeah. to move on past it, right? Like it's a, mm-hmm. uh, it's just, it's, it's a, it, it comes down to like your level of trust. So mm-hmm. I feel like maybe Elizabeth trusted Philip. Or maybe it was just an unspoken agreement. Who knows? But I can see why at the end she's so sad. And she's crying. Is she crying? Yeah. She like stipples back her tears and she gets really sad. Because the interesting thing there is like, so Philip tells her like, I think that you should go and see um, Penny. And I think it'll be interesting because then you'll get the truth about. Because Philip, while on this journey of figuring out his lineage and all that stuff and them doing the DNA testing between Philip and the Russian, the, and the, and the, and like the body, the remains that they find Um, them doing that. It's all through Philip because it's Philip's family. Philip has the blood that connects them to this family. And so in that Philip really discovers how much of um, his life got fucked by the crown and how, uh, the, they uncover the possible truth that they were asked by the English to save them and they decided not to. Actually, that was the truth. The truth is that they found them. And or, the truth is that they were asked to save them. They chose not to. And Penny's theory is that it was because the queens had a rivalry. Yeah, because and they were sisters. Because they were sisters. And Elizabeth says that, you know, People think that, but really what it was was that Queen Mary had a um, – she had too much on her plate, and she couldn't take that on. And she was just re- really worried about her existing duties being overshadowed because of this attempt to save her sister or whatever. Yeah, there's a whole thing about, like, you know, there's, I guess, anti-German sentiment or something. I forget. Yes. It's been yeah. a while. Um, exactly. And that was, that was interesting um, just as a viewer because when I was watching it, um, and this may be conditioned by, or I may be conditioned by the stuff that we watch and just kind of like the general misogyny that exists in the world. But mm-hmm. I was, you know, when Penny was uh, sharing her theory about one woman being jealous of another woman because well, the other yeah. woman looks better. Yeah. Um, I was like, yeah, you know what? That makes sense to me. Right. And I was like, oh yeah, yeah, that's, that's how women are or whatever. Right. Um, and then uh, Elizabeth is like, no, that's not the thing. It, all women aren't how to get each other. Right. Yeah. And it's interesting that she's having that conversation with this younger, um, you know, I guess more uh, classically uh, attractive person um, who is uh, entangled with her husband on some level. Right. Yeah. Um, so she was just like, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm, the thing about me, I'm not jealous of you. I'm not jealous of your relationship. I, but I have a duty. Just like uh, my great-great-grandmother or whatever, she mm-hmm. had a duty. That's the reason why. It's not just simply I am jealous of another person or she was just jealous of another person. So that was um, 
that was interesting to watch. Him. Yeah, and I think like uh, again, Elizabeth is such a black and white person, but I think the truth there is that like you can have both things be a little bit true. Mm-hmm. Like her her issue a lot of times in her marriage with Philip is that because she is bound to duty, she can't pour herself into her marriage the way that perhaps other women can. And so it's not just that maybe she's not classically beautiful like other people, but it's it, yeah. so it wouldn't be like a a surface level version of like of like envy. It's more yeah. so just like envious of the fact that other women get to dedicate their lives to their husbands in a way that she will never be able to because she is the queen of fucking England. Yeah. And I think that's I, I think those are really interesting conversations. But exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I enjoyed I enjoyed this episode quite a bit because I, I did do, too. I do enjoy seeing the relationship between Philip and Elizabeth because I feel like it's a relationship we've like l- learned about the most on this show. Yeah. Like it's it's Elizabeth's show. So yeah. I really enjoyed that part. It was cute. And even the ending was cute with like the dog. She's playing with the dogs and he's sitting uh, and just reading his papers or whatever he's doing. Just like, you know, it's, I guess you just make it work, right? That's well, also, like, she's, she talks about, like, there are, it's okay. I think, I think she, I don't know who she's talking to, but they're talking about how you don't necessarily have to be with somebody and have a million things in common with them. Like, you, yeah. you don't have to do all the same things as your partner. That is like a realization I had maybe like two years into my marriage, where like I realized that initially, like, I got married with this idea that like my husband is going to be the person that I talk to about every single thing. But there's so many things that I can't, I can't talk to my husband about not because I'm like hiding it from him, but just because number one, he doesn't care. And number two, (laughs) like, cause like there are just things that he's not as interested in, but also like, I think that there's just other people who serve that, like who serve those who are better served in those relationships like my relationship with him is a place where i'm i can talk to him about every single thing if i want to but there's better people who i can talk to about some things and that is also okay so i did enjoy that also where she's like got her puppers and he's got his papers that's great yeah yeah it's cute it's cute it's fine. You know what? If my husband wants to have a little friend, oh, there we go. A, a little someone on the side. Send your Polaroids, ladies and gents. <laughs> no, no. You know what's funny? You bring this up. So there's this. You know that like uh, there's a woman who wears a Muslim woman who wears hijab who is on the like uh, she's on the staff of the Eagles. Mm-hmm. She's a data like she's like head of data something yeah, for yeah, the she's Eagles. Data. Yeah. Yeah, she's, uh, she's the sister of uh, one of the community members over here, actually. Yeah, like, uh, the niece or something. Yeah, yeah. So Fahad brings her up often, <laughs> um, just because he thinks it's so cool. Yeah, He's it like, is. man, it's that's the coolest so cool. thing in the world. It's He's the like, best. it's so cool that you get to like be a data analyst for your favorite football team, right? Yep. And he just thinks he's like, it's so cool. And she's a Muslim girl, and she wears hijab, and like, it's such a cool thing. And there is a part of me inside who's like, she thinks she's so fucking cool. Why don't you go marry her? First of all, she's like 22, you maniac. She's so young. She's a baby. But, yeah. <laughs> but, 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 you know, the reality of the situation is that I'm like, yeah, it's fine, whatever. Like, I don't care. You know, it's like, who cares? Who cares at this point? But you do care. I do care. I uh, care, but not enough to like do anything about it. You know, like that that part of your brain where you're like, hmm. but like that goes <laughs> away. <laughs> that goes away after a little bit. Yeah. yeah. And I do feel like sometimes when he is talking about this, like these kinds of jobs, like these kinds of people who are like in, or yeah. there's another one. What's her name? Mina. Mina. Mina Kimes. Kimes? Oh, yeah. yeah. He loves her. She's great. And I'm like, fuck off. <laughs> Because I love her, too. She's gorgeous. She's one of the best analysts out there, right? I mean, regardless of gender, right? Um, and But, you know, that that stuff, like, like there's a lot of that stuff in, like, sports reporting now, right? Mm-hmm. Like, obviously, Mina Kimes, the, you can't, you know, you can't question her credentials because she's obviously a badass. Yeah. Um, but it is a woman in that in that space. Um, and it and you just need some time to kind of, I guess, just get used to it because you haven't seen it. Yeah, so but he long. will then just like 
you know, grind my gears by being like, oh, my girl Mina piece t- tweeted this. I'm like, <laughs> shut up. She's the best. But, she you know, is. just just so you know, on the other side, um, you know, your husband is just having some fun uh, about Mina Kimes because she's amazing. On the other side, Mina Kimes still has to deal with people like uh, ex-quarterbacks being like, well, you know, she's never played it down in the NFL. So you really <laughs> no, should. So <laughs> Those are, you know, those are, those are the, 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 the two sides. I so, know. Like, you know. I know. Mina no, Kimes I, is amazing. No, my husband is great. Mina Kimes is great. The hijabi who works with the Eagles is great. Everyone's great. I'm the piece of shit. Okay. You are. Right, you are the problem. It. That's it. That's the end of this episode. I'm the you, problem. You and ex 49ers quarterback Jeff Garcia are the problems. He's the one that's like this. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it for this episode. I will be back on the weekend to finally catch up on Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. And then next week, just so you know, there are um, there is going to be a special White Lotus finale drop what? with uh, you're not going to be on it. Um, I haven't watched any of the episodes. I would have been on it. What the no, fuck? The, the calm down. It's going to be Kendrick from Reality and Comics 2 and Tom Hamlet from Dumpster Dive. We're going to talk about White Lotus and we can't wait. Two gentlemen that I love and adore and you, I wouldn't have... I would have an affair. I would have a, a stimulating mental affair with both of those gentlemen. <laughs> but I wasn't invited to this orgy, so. Do you – oh, you haven't watched a single episode of White Lotus, I, right? What, what what do I have going on? I can watch the entire season, like, tonight. You can. You should. You know what? Why don't you do that? Why right. don't you do that? I'll earn my I'll, I'll earn my way on the episode. Yeah, you do that. Me. You tell me your theories about the show because you know White Lotus last season also opened up with a murder. Um, that's the whole thing, and then you're trying to figure out who it is that was murdered. My only theory about that show is that I would like to sleep with every single person on that show. Oh, regardless of gender. Regardless of gender, regardless oh, of age. Super progressive. Oh, regardless of age. <laughs> My goodness. We don't even have to carbon date the genitals. (laughs) 